We are what hides everybody. We are the evil. We are the darkness. These are our stories. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I have three horrifying tales from Reddit for you. So, me and my friend, we'll just call him Jim, always take my dog on a night walk when he slept over at my house. We were 13 when this happened. My dog is a tri-colored corgi named Cuddles. We live in a very populated suburban area, but down my road the path gets smaller and it leads first beside a small meadow or field to our eight and a small forest a couple hundred feet ahead. After you get out of the woods, you can either take the dog path which leads back to our house, or you could take a sidewalk into a small neighborhood. This will all come into use later in the story. So my friend Jim and I decided to go around 12.30 at night. We went through our neighborhood fine till we got to the entrance of the field. We both brought pocket knives and flashlights. I shined my light in the field and saw the shape of a man about 5'9 and broad. I whispered to Jim, There's a man in the field, don't startle him, and just stay calm, we'll pretend we didn't see him. We walk till we're almost to the forest path and he sprints through the forest and into the neighborhood ahead. Once we're in the neighborhood in a well-lit area, I ask him why he ran. He said, I saw a man. I told him the man was all the way in the meadow, so I asked him why he ran. He said there was a man maybe three feet away from us. I shivered at the thought. I said, well you did see the man in the meadows. And he said, the meadows? I thought you were talking about the man right behind us. Turns out that there had been a man walking right behind us for a while. And Jim running probably saved my life. We still take night walks to this day, which is why I feel the need to say, creepy men from the meadow, let's never meet again. This happened about eight or nine years ago. When I was around 10 years old, my family and I moved to the murder capital of Canada. At the time, always a smart choice. So during lunch hour, my friends and I usually stayed at school or went to my friend's house to play The Sims. Clearly, we were cool. One day during lunch hour, I was walking back to school with two male friends. That specific day, we had decided to walk to the strip mall in our neighborhood over to go to McDonald's. On our way back, we were only maybe two blocks away from school when I noticed a really old, worn out looking brown van driving in our direction. This van looked like it drove straight out of the 70s, but I didn't think anything of it. As the brown van got closer, I expected it just to drive by like any other car. Instead, the second brown van reached us, the driver slammed on the brakes, and it came to an instant stop. The streets were usually dead at that time of day. I only looked at the van for a split second, and was fairly certain I could see that there were at least three men inside. Me being the only smart one apparently, obviously doubled my pace so I could get away from the van. My two male friends for some reason didn't find it creepy and stayed behind at the speed they were walking. That's when the driver backs up to exactly where I was. I refused to look at the van that time but I heard the driver yell to me, How much for one night? And as soon as he says that I can hear and clearly see that someone was trying to open the sliding door of the van from the inside. Within half a second of hearing the click of the door starting to open, I began sprinting to my friend's house. Thankfully, my two male friends smartened up and started running too. At that time, the van sped away. One of my friends later told me as the door started opening, one of the men seemed to be fiddling with something that looked like a gun. I tried to calm myself down by telling myself it was just some sick prank, that it was probably just an airsoft gun or something along those lines. I didn't want to worry anyone by something that could have been a joke, so I didn't tell anyone when I got back to school. 
That afternoon in the computer lab, a classmate of mine came in saying that some guys tried to abduct her during lunch hour in a brown van, but she'd ran off before they could. She had been walking from the direction I saw the van speed off. I freaked out and told her what happened to me during the lunch hour. Next thing I know, I'm being dragged into the office and being questioned by police about the situation because they were opening a case on the matter. I never found out what happened with the case. It's possible that it could have just been a sick joke that these men took too far. But either way, I'd never been so scared in my life. My dad and I were big horror freaks, always watching something scary or trying to scare the shit out of each other by jumping out of closets or hiding under beds and grabbing each other's feet. So when we were on vacation one summer, we were beyond excited to come across a haunted house attraction on the boardwalk. It was getting late and we were lucky enough to be the last ones to get in. Various creepy characters awaited us at the gate thinking they could frighten us. They didn't know who they were dealing with. Creepy clowns and vampires chased us, and while everyone else was screaming, my father and I gave each other the, is that all you got? Look. We walked through rooms filled with blood or strobe lights with monsters glimmering in the background. All of this unfazed me until we got to a room that was nothing but darkness. Couldn't see a thing at all. I quickly felt from my father's hand and we fumbled our way through the darkness where things grabbed at my feet or something brushed against my shoulders when suddenly something grabbed my other hand. Dad, do you have my hand? I asked. Of course I do, he replied. Then who's got my other hand? Those five minutes walking through that darkness seemed like five hours. As we came upon the end of the attraction and came into a lit room, I ever so slowly turned to see what fate had in store for me. What was holding my hand? It took everything I had to turn and see, and to my relief it happened to be two women that came in late to the attraction, and were let in last minute. As they fumbled their way through the darkness, they found their way to a scared shitless eleven year old boy, and latched on to him. Well, weren't those stories just terrifying? Don't forget, if you like this video, to smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, have a terrifying evening.